because, uh, you know, one thing, Greg, Mike, I don't know who was in charge of putting those clips together, but we've got to be able to find somebody more intimidating looking than Robbie Bosco. I mean, rule number one, never put a kicker or a quarterback on a tape you want to be intimidating. So, uh, no, Robbie's great. Uh, he was my coach, actually, uh, my junior and senior year, so we have a great relationship. But um, I, I guess they told me I had 15 or 20 minutes, but that seems like a long time. These guys are tired and, and uh, had a long day, but I thought I'd talk a little bit about me coming to BYU. I grew up in San Antonio and didn't know a Mormon, or didn't know that I knew a Mormon, uh, but um, I had a chance to see BYU play on TV in 84. And was just impressed. My dad was my high school coach and he ran a pro style offense. He played semi pro football for the San Antonio Toros. Uh, started out at Florida State as a receiver, played receiver, basketball, baseball there. And uh, I think it was more having that camaraderie, having a chance to play again and then played semi pro. He was a wide receiver. So uh, naturally, I wanted to be a quarterback. And, uh, <laughs> You know, it's funny because I feel like I could go out and really coach a wide receiver because as a quarterback, you know what the quarterback's saying and what you want out of a receiver. And uh, I think he knew what he wanted out of a quarterback, so he coached quarterbacks. And uh, it was a great combination, obviously, uh, for me and my brother to be able to play for him and, and kind of him uh, tutor us. And one of the things he always taught was, you know, throw an easy, a catchable ball. And so, you know, sometimes you get mistaken for not having a very strong arm because you're not just firing it every time. And, and granted, I didn't have the strongest arm. I couldn't throw it 70, 80 yards, but uh, I always felt like, you know, I throw a very catchable ball, make it easy on the receiver, because if you throw it accurate and it goes through his hands, it's still an incompletion. So, uh, and he always kind of emphasized that to us on quick passes, slants and things, throw it where the guy can catch it, quick, but not hard. And uh, and so he was a great teacher because he was a receiver and he knew, he knew what he wanted out of a quarterback and very fortunate to play for him. And in that, we ran a pro-style offense and having the opportunity to see uh, Robbie Bosco drop back and throw it 30, 40 times a game. Uh, probably wasn't even that many at the time, but throw it a lot for them. And it kind of excited me that there was a school out there because back in the 80s, uh, these guys won't believe it, but. Nobody threw the ball more than probably 20 times a game. And uh, so I, I started kind of paying attention to BYU and had some success uh, my junior year and, and broke the state uh, single season passing record that year. And, you know, BYU then, uh, I kind of was on their radar a little bit, but they hadn't recruited Texas much. And, and so my dad called BYU and that same day, uh, we were going through kind of spring drills in Texas. Your PE class is football. We were in seven on seven, <laughs> all those things. So we were out running seven on seven right before lunch was our athletic period. And, and, and my dad had just called that morning and then walked off Bassett uh, that, that day about noon. And, and my dad was like, hey, you guys work quick. So uh, it was just a natural fit. And I got real excited about the opportunity coming to BYU with the quarterback tradition. And, and, you know, the tradition, uh, you see that all over the place right now. And, and that's what it was all about for me was the tradition of, of quarterbacks that had come before me. You know, uh, Gary Scheiding, Mark Wilson, Gifford Nielsen, Jim McMahon, Steve Young, Bosco, you know, all these guys that, that I didn't really realize had gone to BYU. And, then you look on the map, where is BYU? Well, it's in Utah, I've never been in mountains. And, uh, Texas is all private land. And you come out, you take a trip, and you can just drive up in those mountains and go anywhere you want. So uh, it was the place for me. So uh, just, I you know, couldn't ask for a better place to go to school. Um, I wasn't a member, but I quickly uh, found that people were interested in teaching me the discussions. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot of offers and kind of turned them down early on, took the religion classes and those things, but um, you know, a lot of the things I, I was learning were things that I kind of grew up believing, and uh, that's the way they were supposed to be, so I always stayed kind of close to the church, but never got serious, and then met a girl, 
You know, I better get serious and find out what she believed. And so one thing led to another, and I really got serious about it. And uh, uh, again, it was everything I, I grew up believing and the way that things were supposed to be. And, and a lot of great examples around me, coaches and friends and, and all those things. But uh, just the whole college experience, you know, I guess it's a little different at BYU than most colleges where you're worried about where you're going out Saturday night or, or uh, you know, Provo, you're worried about the old star palaces. Is it, is it like? <laughs> Those kind of things. But uh, there's not a lot to worry about in Provo. Uh, that was okay with me, you know. I was, I was happy to be there, and it was football, and, and hanging out with your buddies, and, and having a good time. And, uh, you know, playing for Lavelle was, was awesome because he let you play. You know, he didn't just grind you. He let the assistants do that. That was their job, and, and he was that kind of voice of reason that kept everybody together. And I see Bronco being that, that same kind of figure. You know, football's his life, and, and molding young men into great, great people is, is what he's all about. And, uh, you know, when you leave football and you're not a part of the program or team, I mean, I've played 14 years in the NFL, and when a guy would come in the locker room that, that maybe had already retired or or had played, but now he's not part of the team, you could sense that that guy, he, yeah, he was here, but he really doesn't belong here. And uh, it's great that Bronco allows guys like myself and other players to come in and, and be a part of team meetings and things because, you know, I know how it is. And that's why I don't come around a lot and want to be nosy and what's going on and everything because once you're out, you're out. And uh, these guys got their own thing going. And, and so proud to, to follow them every year and, and the type of young men that they're, they're turning out uh, is more important than the games we're winning and, and all those things. Yeah, we want to win, uh, <laughs> but the important thing is we're doing it the right way. And, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate uh, Robert and the whole staff of what they're doing and, and how they treat the guys in, in the team meetings. And I've been fortunate to be in a couple of them. And, and the way they interact with each other, and just they really enjoy being there and, and being a part of the program, and, and that was the, the same way for me. So I'm glad that tradition is back, and guys are enjoying playing and having a good time. And spring ball's great, isn't it? You know, you get to beat up each other and, and uh, win sprints and all those great things. But uh, that that builds the team. It builds character on your team, and, and uh, you know everybody's got a funny story. One of my First, I guess, experience at BYU was uh, I registered in my first year. The next year, uh, I started out as the backup. We played at Wyoming, first night game. They had the roll lights in, and you know, I'm like, I grew up in Texas, where every little town has lighted stadium, and here was a university with no lights. <laughs> we playing, you know, there. Was that? Uh, and so they bring the lights in. And, Sean Covey's starting, he gets a concussion into the first half. So, you know, I, they tell me at halftime, all right, you're in. And uh, like, great, you know, excited, go out there. First series, you know, right down the field, boom, 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 touchdown, Chuck Cutler, nothing to it. You know, it's just like high school, there's no difference. <laughs> well, then they started blitzing and uh, <laughs> proceeded to throw four interceptions and fumble in the last five series. So, uh, it was, a, uh, it was a rude awakening, but it wasn't an awakening. I knew I had to go back and get back to, to business and, and really study and, and be mentally prepared because you can't just go out there and play at this level. And so the very next week, we're playing UT at home, University of Texas, and you know, my old stomping grounds. And, and I, you know, I'm probably never going to get to play again, but uh, hopefully I will. And so. We're blowing them out, you know, we're beating them. I don't remember what the score was, but it was fourth quarter, and okay, you're in again. And uh, we put a play in. Texas was like old school, you know, straight man-to-man -man coverage. So we put a play in that week to motion the running back out of the backfield to clear out a linebacker so the receiver could have room to work in there on an option route. And it was, you knew what coverage it was going to be. It was just a matter of our guy beating their guy. And so the coaches wanted to keep it simple for me because of my previous game. <laughs> so they called the option route, you know, and I know it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. I got, uh, it's probably
probably Chuck Cutler at the time because I wanted to keep some guys in there that I could have a little success with. And, uh, so, you know, Michael Bryan, I don't know if any of you guys remember him. I'm sure some of you do, but he was one of the real characters on our team. And he's the halfback, and he's giving me goofy faces in the huddle. And, and stuff. And, you know, we're way ahead, so it's one of those games where you can kind of joke around. But I'm, I can't afford to joke around because my last game. Uh, so I get up under center, and I start calling the cadence, and I send him in motion, and, and I hear, hey, hey, hey. And I, I'm like thinking, you know, I screwed something up again. And uh, I look over, and he's like pointing to the linebacker and motioning, hey, hey, hey. And, you know, I'm like, what's going on? You know? And so the linebacker kind of looks, and oh, that's my guy, and he runs out of there. <laughs> supposed to go with me and he wasn't really